Hey, good evening. Good evening. Can we, can we all, are you hearing me? Looks like you're all hearing me. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Welcome to the third tutor reunion for CSE Tutors. To start this off, I'd like to introduce UCSD Chancellor Pradeep Kolsa. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Uh, this is purely astounding. I, I don't know what to say because I was talking to Gary and I said, how many tutors do you have? And he said, 360 this year. And I'm thinking most computer science majors in the country, departments in the country, don't have 360 majors, period, <laughs> right? Uh, but this is something that you all should be extremely proud of, and I know that I'm very proud of. I knew, this, I knew about this program, but I did not quite appreciate the size of this program. So thank you, Gary. I know you are the tutor-in-chief. You are the first tutor, right? <laughs> Were you not the first tutor here? <laughs> no, but you are the first real tutor. Uh, so, so please help me say thank you to Gary for doing such a great job. Thank you, sir. Uh, yep. And then I'm told you're all very highly paid, like $18 an hour, <laughs> which is above minimum wage. You know that, right? I mean, it's twice the minimum wage, and this doesn't happen without having a department chair who's both visionary and committed to the student experience. So help me thank Dean Tulson, please. <laughs> Now, this is a program uh, amazing in multiple ways, right? I think uh, the one way which it's really amazing is you are a peer group that is teaching peers, and it's known, well known in the research literature, especially in education literature, that peer-to-peer -peer learning is more effective than instructor-to-student learning, and you have experienced that in your classes, right? Thank you to all your teachers who are sitting right here. <laughs> They're sitting right here. They're not happy, okay? <laughs> They're going to be dealing with you on a great basis in the class. Anyway, no, actually, it's, it's, in fact, it's indeed true. And I think this is what makes uh, computer science uh, on our campus uh, such a dynamic department and such a dynamic discipline. So on our campus, I just want to say a few words about computer science. There's computer science, the department. Uh, computer science and engineering, the department. And there's CSE, the area. And the area is much bigger than the department. And I can tell you that on this campus, the area, the whole broad field of computer science and engineering is having a very significant impact. It has a significant impact on the country in terms of driving our economy. But on this campus, it is front and center. It is front and center initially because of CSE as a department, and now because of uh, the Data Sciences Institute, which the other tutor in deputy chief uh, created. <laughs> Taner, thank you very much. Uh, uh, You know, many times in academia, there is a limit to what a single named structure can do and how much it can grow. But if you can find multiple instances of the same structure and give it different names, you know, just like object-oriented programming, it's just different names, <laughs> right? Uh, you can actually create a much bigger impact. And I think what we are seeing here is CSE, which has become a very impactful department uh, ranked top 20, number 15, number 16 in the country in its PhD program, part of JSOE, which is uh, top 12 in the country right now. Um, it's going to grow bigger and bigger, but because of the creation of the Data Sciences Institute, you're going to see that our, the world's perception of what UC San Diego does in computer science, the area, is going to be much bigger than computer science, the department, and it's going to all come back and reflect on computer science, the department. And this is a strategy that many schools have followed, not many, a few schools have followed, and they have done extremely well. So the point I'm trying to make is the area in which you are all in, regardless of what course you're tutoring, uh, you are actually the driver of our reputation going forward, and you are the driver of the economy in this country going forward. So I just want to say thank you, everybody, for doing this. Keep up the good work, and let's find a way to scale this tutor model to other departments. I don't understand 
why other departments in engineering and other uh, divisions don't uh, borrow a lot from this peer-to-peer -peer tutoring model. Uh, maybe it's just because there's a lot more coding in computer science, but I hope it's not just a lot more coding. How many of you pull all-nighters? <laughs> oh, come on. No, no, no. A true computer science department, when I was growing up, everybody would raise their hand. <laughs> no, it's actually good. I, th I think the reason you don't is because you've all grown much smarter. I was not as smart as a student. You've all grown much smarter and more efficient. There are much better software practices, coding practices, uh, that you don't have to uh, debug on a line by line and an object code basis. But nonetheless, thank you very much for doing what you do. Uh, thank you, Gary, for being such a great leader. Thank you, Dean, for uh, investing the resources. This is all for our students, and I really appreciate everything you do. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And our next speaker will be Dean Tulson, Chair of Computer Science. Thank you, Dean. All right, I just want to add my, uh, my welcome, and uh, thank you all for, uh, for coming back on campus. Um, it's, it's great to see you all. I just, um, uh, just, just want to say, say a couple things. I'll keep it pretty br brief. I did want to mention that uh, Al Pisano, uh, a dean of the Jacobs School of Engineering, really wanted to be here, but, but uh, he couldn't because of conflict. Um, and, and mostly, I, I just want to say uh, uh, thank you for continuing to care about uh, our department. Um, I, I have to admit that the, uh, the Tudor alumni are some of our favorite alumni. Now, don't share this outside the room. <laughs> uh, but, but, but for some reason, the, the Tudor alumni, uh, you know, continue to stay connected to the department, uh, continue to, to, to be paying attention to what we're doing, uh, uh, con continue to, I, I know you guys are, are hiring our, our students, uh, which is great. Um, and, you know, when I see uh, that, that monthly port on who's making donations. I see a lot of donations for that tutor fund, which is great. And, uh, and, and, uh, and thank you for all these things. Um, I, I just want to give you a few updates on, on what's going on in the department a little, a little bit, since uh, uh, some of you have been for, away for a little while. Um, uh, how many of you saw the, uh, the renovation? Did you do the, the building tour? Pretty cool, huh? Um, I know some of you are probably getting used to the new building still. Um, how many are that old? Yeah, there you go. Uh, but, but, but again, thanks to the vision of, of several people, but including uh, Rajesh and Tanair and, and others, uh, Gary, Gary was involved. Um, uh, 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 you know, we, we, we've got this great new space with, with, with new meeting rooms, and, uh, and, and, but it also really changed the flow, uh, particularly for the undergraduate students who are no longer hidden in the basement with sort of no access and the elevators <laughs> locked out at night. <laughs> Um, and, and, and you see the difference around campus, right, if you, I, I, around the building, right? If you walk around and, and see our open spaces where we have furniture these days, I mean, they're always filled all the time with undergraduates just hanging around uh, and, and working. So that's really exciting, uh, and, and that's already having an impact on the way we do things. Um, some of you know about this, um, uh, uh, the new data science undergraduate program. Uh, uh, Pretty talked about uh, the data science institute and data science in general, but we've got you know, a new undergraduate program. We've got 350 declared majors and more coming and, uh, and, and a full set of first year classes and we've got the second year classes in place uh, for next year. Uh, uh, extremely popular program and uh, real exciting things are happening there. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're continuing to hire new faculty. We've actually brought on 14 new faculty in the last two years, um, but five, five new faculty last year. Um, <laughs> And, you know, it, it's great having new faculty. It's great as an as older faculty member having lots of young faculty in the department. It's, it's, it, it really changes the energy. We're, we're working on trying to fill four slots for this year, and so we're very actively hiring and seeing some great people. So the, the, the university has, has really been helpful to us in, in trying to meet the demand that we have. And you all know how our, our, our undergraduate enrollments have spiked, but, but you know what we want, want to do is be able to serve this large population, but serve it well by having a faculty that matches the uh, the, the student population. Um, and so, uh, uh, lots of exciting things going on in the department. I'd love to talk to more people individually, but I I need to get off the stage. And so, um, <laughs> I think next on the agenda is Aaron Liao, who is chair of our alumni board. The alumni board is this amazing group for those of you that that, that don't know it. That 
that advise the department on a whole, whole number of issues and really serve the department in a lot of ways as well. It, it really go out of the way to, to, to work with our students, to, to help them prepare professionally. They actually really help us with recruiting students as well. And it's an amazing group. And uh, Aaron's going to come up and talk. So as I was sitting next to Dean uh, and Cody, it dawned on me that I had no prepared remarks. And I thought that this was like a smaller thing. And I started to really, really panic. Um, <laughs> The good news is that you only have to tolerate five minutes of my impromptu speaking at the most. The bad news is that I have to tolerate five minutes of my impromptu speaking, <laughs> which is infinitely scarier for me than it is tormenting for you. Um, my name is Aaron Liao. I got my BS in computer engineering here in oh, 2005. Um, <laughs> let's try and say that faster so no one remembers. I'm our current president of our CSC alumni board. I've had the pleasure of meeting and interacting with a lot of you. And um, I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to meet some more of you tonight, actually. Um, I am I'm proud to be an alumni board member. It's, I think it's year six or seven for me at this point. Eight? Oof. Okay. I think I'm a lot younger than I am. Yay for me. Um, uh, alumni board members, come and take some of the heat off of me. Can you guys stand up and, and turn around so that people can see you real quick? There are 13 of us spread across different disciplines, spread across different parts of the U.S., across different companies. Uh, we frequently have openings. If you're here at this tutor reunion, if you're an alum and you, you came back here, clearly you can't get enough of this place like we couldn't either. So I encourage you to apply to the alumni board. You'll get to come back all the time and continue working with students. I still go into the lab. I bring carne asada fries. I debug with kids sometimes. It's a ton of fun. Think about it. You'll get to do things like... Um, hear about the curriculum, maybe make some changes in it, see what all the cool things that faculty and students are working on. It's a very fulfilling thing. I want to let you guys in on a secret. I didn't actually tutor when I was at UCSD. <laughs> <laughs> to my credit, though, I did teach computer science. So, oh, yeah, that's true. I, I, it's not too late. It's never too late. Hmm. I did actually teach computer science somewhere else at another university, and I wanted to relate a story to you that I thought of while sitting here next to Dean panicking about not having anything prepared. Um, about two years ago, I was traveling. I was in Hong Kong, and I was in a restaurant, and I was eating with some friends. And from across the room, I, I saw a girl staring at me, and she had, I, I wouldn't call it a look of repulsion or hatred. I think it was more like awe and shock and maybe a bit of repulsion. Uh, <laughs> but at some point, which is completely natural for me, I get it all the time, so I, one empathizes, right? So at some point, she came over and she said, hi, um, are you Aaron? And I, I go, oh, God, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's me. And, um, and she says, do you, do you remember me? And uh, if you've been one of my students through Spice or something like that, generally, you know, I have a terrifyingly good memory for these sorts of things, but no, I honestly didn't remember her at all. Um, so I lied, of course, and I said, yes, of course I remember you. <laughs> and, and she says, I haven't seen you in like a decade. I, I go, yeah, I realize. And she goes, I, it's been so long, but I, the, your object-oriented programming course stuck with me so much. I, I want to tell you about it. And I think, hmm, this should be good. And <laughs> I'm starting to feel pretty good about myself. I'm like, this is fantastic, right? You know, uh, it's, I'm out in the middle of nowhere, or not nowhere, but I'm somewhere else, and someone remembers me for something good I did. That's always nice. She goes, that course had such an impact on me, you convinced me not to be a computer scientist. <laughs> and uh, I was at a loss of words for the first time in my life. I, and she goes, but no, it's, it's a really great thing. She goes, you and your tutors had such an impression on me. You were so patient. So understanding, you tried to explain pointer arithmetic to, arithmetic to me in so many ways, including a YouTube video, uh, I, and I will never forget it. But in your course, I figured out that computer science wasn't for me, and I didn't want to be a software engineer. And I go, well, um, okay, I'm sorry. And she goes, no, no, uh, I manage a hedge fund now. I'm happier than ever. Um, <laughs> my life is going super well. I finished computer science, but I knew for after your course I didn't want to be a software engineer. 
Uh, I'm glad you guys are laughing because at some point it dawned on me, I'm like, why am I telling you this story instead of one where, you know, students actually liked me and went on to do amazing things like pursue PhDs in crypto or, or work at Facebook or, you know, all the other stories I've heard today. But this one seemed appropriate because the last thing she said to me is what I'm going to leave you guys with, which is uh, you changed the course and the outcome of my life. And I'm always going to remember that. That's exactly what you guys do um, every day. I hope that you guys, when you have a chance here, you share your stories with each other. Maybe you meet some of your former students from when you were tutors, maybe you don't. But reach out to them, keep in touch with them. You have forever changed the course of someone's life based on what you guys have, what you guys have done. So pat yourselves on the back and, and be, be super excited about that. Thank you for your time. Uh, we have another great speaker here. Uh, I'd like to introduce Cody Noguera, the Executive Director of the Corporate Research Partnerships. Thank you. And, and another round of applause for all of you that are here that made the effort to uh, make your way to campus. Um, who's here from the East Coast? Raise your hand while we get this thing up. Anyone from the East Coast? Well, who thinks they came the furthest? How far did you come from? Where did New you come York. from? New York. New York. Anybody further than New York? <laughs> oh, yeah, that doesn't count. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, Becky just whispered at me like she did earlier um, to stick to the script. And um, I'm going to do that. So I hope you all bear with me uh, so that I can keep on this five-minute timeline. So, um, you know, they say with presentations, tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them again and then the end, finish with telling them once more what it is that you want to convey. The nice thing is that um, the speakers you've had before have, uh, have, have mentioned some things that I'm just going to echo and maybe, maybe a different way. And ultimately, the folks who might be speaking after might repeat a little bit of what I have to say as well. So uh, bear with us. So I think one of the things they wanted me to tell you about is uh, taking a look at the school uh, uh, from a snapshot snapshot point, uh, perspective. Um, so 10 years ago, what did uh, the Jacobs School of Engineering look like and what does it look like today? And I think the most important thing is that you now are looking at the largest engineering school in the entire state of California, period. It's doubled in size. I mean, that's, that's really impressive, right? And that's a testament to the kinds of, uh, of, of uh, student, staff, faculty that this place attracts and, can, and all the work that you guys are doing out in industry that um, make this a choice school and a choice destination. Um, just to kind of get, get put that into perspective, I was told that there were nearly 21,000 applications for this incoming 1718 class uh, for engineering students. That's just for undergraduates. There were more than 11,000. <laughs> there was more. There was more than 11,000 applications for the graduate level uh, positions, and that that. You know, that's really just for something in the neighborhood of 2,200 spaces available. So it's extreme competition to get in here. You all should be very proud that you, you came here and accomplished what you have and you're out doing what you're doing. So more importantly, the department that you all care about. Computer science has just absolutely exploded. It is, uh, and I'm not fairly certain, maybe Dean, um, or Rajesh or anyone else uh, here in the front two rows. It's the largest computer science engineering department in the nation. Again, really impressive. <laughs> That's it's really just astronomic growth. Um, you know, in addition to the, uh, the growth in students, we've been attempting to keep up with the growth in the faculty to make up for all these, uh, this great talented people who want to come here and get a great education. And so we've done a lot of hiring, right? Uh, so in just the past 10 years, you've seen us go from 180 to 247 or so uh, engineering faculty, and, uh, and we're not done yet. And that is ultimately going to help us project from being a top 12 engineering school to hopefully climbing our way to the top as we have as the entrepreneurial spirited university to being a top five. Right? And you guys will help us get there. So these aren't just any faculty that we're bringing in either. These are truly rock star faculty that are doing really innovative things uh, coming in uh, to the department. So 
Um, just to kind of give you a sense of the, 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 the size and scale of UC San Diego, it's always nice to see, and um, the chancellor uh, does a great job in ensuring that we remain on this path of growth here. But $1.1 billion enterprise dedicated to research on some of the world's toughest problems or toughest challenges, things like uh, health, healthy aging, aging in the home, robotics, autonomy, data science, and many other areas are, are at the forefront. And with that, there is no public institution that, has do that does more work in engineering per faculty head, so per capita, um, than UC San Diego as a public institution uh, in engineering. Right? So number one funded engineering school that in, the pub in the public realm, right, uh, per faculty head. Most importantly, um, I think when you take a look at how much of that research is actually being done uh, together with pri industry and private partners, it's about 30 to 35 percent, which is very significant. That says uh, to me that this university is doing something different than all the others. We're doing business with industry and we're doing it fairly well for an engineering school. So um, it was mentioned earlier, um, perhaps, that, uh, that the school continues to grow. Part of that growth has, uh, has a little bit to do with finding places to put the, the people that we're bringing on board. Um, and so uh, where you see in the outline there is actually going to be home to one of the Jacobs School of Engineering's newest engineering buildings within the next two to three years. So this is a, yeah, right? This is, a, this is pretty, another significant milestone for the school. Now, most of you are asking where in the heck are people going to park? <laughs> Well, we thought of that first, so there will be a parking structure that will house net several hundred more parking spots. Just on, just on the other side of Jacob's Hall, right? So we thought, we thought of that too. <laughs> so um, most importantly, you know, it's initiatives like these and even these traditions that you that you guys have all made reality in the in the, in the as the tutor group uh, that are being led by alumni and some of the people who are actually here in the room uh, that are engaged and passionate about UC San Diego and the Jacobs School and computer science. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty pretty familiar face, right? So those of you who don't know. Uh, Tanner, Hali Shoglu, I didn't kill it. Um, <laughs> mo most of you may know him primarily not from this photo, but actually from the time that he spends at uh, the infamous round table pizza. <laughs> okay. Um, we celebrated the launch of the Data Science Institute just, a, just a several weeks ago. Um, I... I showed this slide here because this is the, what I spent the first several years of my career here at UC San Diego doing. I actually sat in the office that had the beautiful view of the infamous tree that had to be built around the wall that had to be built around the tree in, uh, with the construction. Now Becky has that office. Um, building out the corporate affiliates program. And what's interesting to me in, with this slide at the bottom line is that I just like to see the, the, how logos and their brands change over the year to become relevant in order to attract great students like you among the other tactics that they employ. So um, the point that they wanted me to make was that industry's been part of uh, this, the computer science engineering tutor program uh, from its inception. Some of the funds that seeded the whole concept of paying tutors at the undergraduate level to uh, to do this kind of program were unfounded. They had not been done anywhere else. And, and really, uh, that, was, uh, that was a company called Intuit that had stepped up to the plate to make that first really big push. And then, of course, Yahoo followed, and then Microsoft and others to make sure that we had a well-funded program, that uh, tutors were not volunteers. They actually felt like they had ownership over a program. And this led to other things like CSE, Tutor Networking Nights, uh, the, the Women in Computing, CSES, Grace Hopper Support, uh, HackXX even, SD Hacks, and 
it's really a testament to the people who are sitting in this room because you've all gone out there and you carry the reputation of the school, whether you want to or not. And so companies come here and, and, and enjoy engaging in the next generation of students. So, um, Sarah, are you still are you sitting here? I don't embarrass Woo! you for a minute. Sarah. So, and I promise I, I'm, I'm going to speed it up. All right, so ultimately, I, I just want to say that, you know, you as alumni sitting in the room continue to be a catalyst for the next generation of tutors to come, attracting the best, guiding them, helping them to whatever it is that comes next beyond the classroom, uh, ultimately teaching them what it means to be good human beings, and there's a lot of good human beings in this room. Um, you know, very quickly through these photos, top left is me, actually, while I was working here at UC San Diego. <laughs> a little younger, in a lot better shape, uh, 24 hours, that was after 24 hours of fun-filled, sleepless, junk food, caffeine-infested hackathon competition. It was the first Yahoo hackathon that we were ever able to host here. Um, next in the photo, you see Tanair giving, and again, this was the first time I had had the chance to meet Tanair. I asked him, literally, can you come back and give us the Hollywood versus reality, truth and lies about the network? <laughs> he said yes. I don't think his talk was about that. Um, and he was, I don't even think he was in the, at Facebook any longer. He had uh, moved on by then possibly to a, a little company called Blizzard. And then on the right... <laughs> On the right is photographic evidence that the students defeated the faculty in epic fashion <laughs> in a round of Code Jeopardy. And overall, uh, what you see here is, a f is people forging lifelong bonds and having more than the occasional slice of pizza. Um, and I know Donna's not here tonight, but shout out to Donna Buell at uh, Roundtable Pizza. <laughs> and I am, uh, I'm going to miss a bunch of thank yous, but really, Rick Ord, Gary, Susan, Paul, Rajesh, Dean, Chancellor, um, you know, thanks for being enablers for these kinds of traditions. And to each of you that uh, you are what drives the best in UC San Diego tradition. So continue to, uh, to be here and be engaged. You know, thank you for having me. Okay, so um, thank you again for coming to our event, and uh, thank you to uh, Dean for helping to fund the event, and to uh, Becky and Kayla for working endlessly to get this thing going. Otherwise, it wouldn't have occurred at all. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, thank you to the other uh, CSC staff who are here tonight as well that are helping to James and Lacey and Leslie, Leslie and and J uh, Nicholas. Nicholas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I just wanted to reflect back a little bit on the tutor program. Uh, I was the tutor in 1986. After I started at the Oasis as a tutor there. The CSE department had, we had proctors, and there were you know, one or two or three for each course. And um, it was a life-changing experience for me. Uh, before I was the tutor, I was bagging groceries and working graveyard shifts and uh, at a supermarket, and I was just looking for a change. And uh, I, what a change I got, right? I, I'm still here so many years later <laughs> after all that time. Uh, I was a struggling student. I didn't really have great student skills. I was really looking for my path, and uh, in being the tutor, you know, it, it helped. It, I found my path, and uh, you know, I'm still here. So uh, that's great. In um, the CSE department, <laughs> I think it's great. I'm I'm happy to be here. So. Thank you. Uh, in about 2000, uh, I was asked to create a tutor training program for the CSE department. And I thought, well, it was such a great life-changing experience for me. Maybe we can make it for, you know, the same thing for s new students. 
and I think what we've created is just beyond my expectations altogether. You know, it, it, being the tutor is where your career begins. You know, it, often it was the first job in your career, and maybe I gave that opportunity to you, or Rick, or Susan, or one of the faculty, and uh, that's just so great. The department culture starts with students helping students in the lab. So you're the role models. They, all the, tu the new students, they want to be like the tutors. And so you from you know, not having too many at all to becoming you know, an essential part of every, tutor every student's experience here is just you know, wonderful. Uh, when I was a tutor, I uh, worked for faculty and they opened doors for me. They gave me opportunities. And um, I just felt like I couldn't thank them enough, right? It just, my life was changed, and they didn't need to be thanked. You know, they weren't looking to be thanked. They, um, you know, I'm, I'm now on the other end, and I just look to, you know, challenge someone and see what they can do and, and uh, you know, work with them, get to know them, you know, build some genuine relationships. And uh, it's great to then be able to refer them out into industry or, help them to grad school and and so although I can't give back to the people that help me I want I'm able to give back to you know new people that maybe you all feel you know similarly uh, you've all gone out into industry and now uh, industry recognizes tutors as a big part of what makes them successful so being the tutor on the resume is just such a bright shining star and it's really due to all all that the alumni have done, you know, the impact you've made at all the different companies that you, um, you know, that you that you're at. Oh, and um, by the way, I don't know how to say this or why I'm the one to say, but there is some kind of a problem with the, your with billing in your tuition. You know, the university they bill you at the beginning of the quarter, but it's not really the beginning; it's the end of the quarter, and that was for the the prior quarter tuition. And so at the end when you graduated, there's still a bill due and you know, they couldn't find you because you moved on. And <laughs> so uh, for those outstanding tuition bills, then uh, you, we can accept those payments. So at, at the tutor fund. And, you know, and when you go there, remember, it's CFC, so it's in binary. So when you want to just give it like $8, it's one zero zero zero. <laughs> okay, so um, for the, we've got about half of you are alumni and half are, are the current tutors. And so we selected a few alumni tutors to be on a panel. So I'd like to ask that they come up. So we have uh, Garo Bornushin, Morgan Cundiff, Sean Rowan, and Kylie Tatiano. Come on up. <laughs> and we, we polled the audience, before they were the audience, all the guests, and we have some questions for you. Um, maybe before we ask them, can, why don't we just introduce yourselves and uh, tell us a little bit about your career path? after being the tutor? Test, okay. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Garo Bernutian. Um, I was here for a good chunk of my life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> perpetual student, I think I got five degrees from this university. Um, so I started in 2000 and I graduated with my bachelor's in 05 and I continued on with a master's and eventually a PhD and even taught here uh, taught compilers here for a couple <laughs> years. So some of you in the audience even were tutors for me, which is like quite the circle. Um, and after I graduated, I was working at Qualcomm for a while and now I'm over at YouTube. So, and a lot of, a lot of my success I definitely attribute to being a tutor. the pressure. Okay. Um, I'm Morgan. I graduated in 2016 from UCSD, my bachelor's, um, and then worked here in San Diego for two years, um, and then just started my master's in computer science in January. Yeah.
Hi everyone, uh, I'm Sean. I graduated here uh, in 2015. Uh, let's see, while I was here, I, uh, I tutored uh, CSC 12, 15L, 110 for Gary. I actually was one of the ones that tutored for you, Garo, as well for 131. <laughs> um, after graduating, I stuck around here. I didn't really find a good excuse to leave San Diego, so I'm just up the street over into it. And I'm actually here on campus more often now um, I'm doing the data science and engineering uh, master's program uh, that they're holding out of Brady right now. So I'm here every other Friday and Saturday all day. Hi, everyone. My name is Kylie. I uh, graduated with a BS and CS in 2014. I was actually very involved in uh, women in computing here. I was the president uh, my last year from 2013 to 2014. Wow. <laughs> but I also tutored for Gary um, and a variety of other um, teachers as well. But I did 12, 8A, 8B, 86, a ton of other stuff. Um, I also work at Intuit. I live literally a mile away from here, so I'm on campus. I should be on campus more, but I'm not. Um, but I'm very happy to be here with you all. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, they all have something in common. They've all been my tutors and uh, in CSE 12. It's, uh, this is my 59th quarter of CSE 12 this quarter. <laughs> and we just told them the lesson of, you know, when you sell your car, don't keep your key. We had read that last, last, just last week. So. So anyway, panel questions. Number one, how did tutoring benefit your, per your professional life? Were there certain skills during tutoring that transferred well over into your work? Um, so I think one of the, one of the biggest things uh, that transferred is actually just the amount of code that you're actually getting to look at. I mean, if you think about, um, you know, when you're kind of at school, you have programming assignments and you're kind of starting from the template that they give you. When you're in industry, you're never working on like your own brand new um, code base. You're always getting someone's code, and you know if you if you've grown, you know your whole time in, in school only looking at your own code. Um, it's it's kind of difficult, you know, to see other people's style and other people's things, and and really be able to to figure out you know what's going on. Um, the other biggest thing that I that I thought was um, really impactful was um, learning how to communicate. You know, there's. There's students that are, some are really advanced and some understand, and then there's some that you really have to kind of like, you know, put a little more effort into. Um, but you have to be able to communicate with that entire spectrum. You have to be able to really read where they are and, uh, um, and just kind of get on the same wavelength and, and communicate. Yeah, my experience was a little similar. Oh, is this on? Oh, yes. it is. Look okay. Closer. Uh, get closer. So on Wednesday, um, I did a run through for a workshop that I'm going to conduct at a conference on Sunday with my team, just to do a practice run. And um, I had a one on one with my manager afterwards so that she could give me some feedback. And she had told me, you have a knack and a passion for tutoring and mentoring. And I said that would not have been shaped without my experience here at UCSD. She, she had known that I was a tutor. And so whether you are a uh, student you know, deer in the headlights looking to uh, learn something new um, about maybe a piece of code that you're going to do or some data structures project that Gary assigned to you in CC12 or a concept that you're working on. Um, you need to have the skills to be able to communicate these kinds of concepts to people that might not necessarily understand it at the first try. And you want to be able to convey um, all the knowledge that you have in an easy manner to understand. Thank you so much. The second question, what do you appreciate the most about the CSC Tutor Program? So I guess what, what I would say I would appreciate the most, um, it's truly like a second family, right? I mean, these are people you get to spend a lot of time with and the beauty of <coughs> tutoring for a lot of these people, like when I tutored for Gary and I tutored for Rick, um, you have like an army, right? There's like 30 of you. And, you know, uh, between 51 you... 51 this quarter for yeah, me. Ev How even more. Have right? <laughs> so, you know, you're in the lab. You, you, have, you don't really feel like you're taking on the world yourself. You have a bunch of other people. And if you get stuck, other people can help you. Um, and it just feels like a community, right? It's, you, you have a group of people that are all trying to work together. And it also helps that just in general, you know, our department's students are 
much more communal and wanting to succeed as a group. So it really is that sense of accomplishment that we're on the same journey and we're all trying to get to the same point and it's just so fun when you can see someone that was struggling all of a sudden understand that idea and you can be like, ah, now they understand it, right? They, you can see it in their eyes, their appreciation of like, it all clicks in all of a sudden and that's something that really is just something that rewarding in itself. Um, I'll close enough, so, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think very similar to what he said. I think like as a tutor, you definitely build a sense of community. When I took CSE 12, I had only ever taken CSE 11. I had no programming background whatsoever. So I think even as a student, I have benefited from the tutor program a lot. Um, and then I'm here in San Diego today with like 10 of my friends who I met because they were my tutors and then I tutored with them the next year. So I think that just goes to show that like your community doesn't end when you graduate. Like I built a strong enough community uh, being a tutor that we are still friends today and we talk all the time and all flew into San Diego together to come to this event. Um, so I think that just shows a lot what the community is like. Yeah, thank you Gary for doing that. Um, yeah, I think it also, really solidified a lot of the things that I learned in 12. I think especially as someone coming in with very little experience, we cover a lot of material in CSE 12. And you know, I got through it and I finished the assignments, but I think tutoring really did, like through looking at uh, everyone else's code and through trying to do the assignments in so many different ways, because you have to when you're trying to help so many different students um, complete them, I really feel like I understood a lot of the basic um, fundamentals of computer science and of object-oriented pro programming that I wouldn't necessarily have as solidified had I just done it once and been done with it. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I remember Morgan being the kind of quiet student in CSE 12, and uh, and she just blossomed as the tutor. And I'm you know just so proud of her accomplishments and her transformation and I don't think that that's uncommon you know so many people have similar experiences of just kind of being the average student or trying their best and oh now I'm the tutor and oh what am I gonna do and and then they get you know they grow and and it's really you know great to see all that third question how do you use or explain your tutor experiences to explain why you are the bet best fit for a particular position can take that, I guess. Um, a lot of places, like when I've interviewed, that's one of the questions they ask, and they can usually tell, I mean, I'll, I'll use a phrase that Rick says all the time, it's the demystifying things. Like most engineers that you might encounter, coworkers, might just assume things work, and like they don't really know the why or the how, and it just, you know, if something, they're debugging it, they're like, well, I don't know, maybe there's a problem, something's not right. But if you actually understand it, and you can explain it to someone, that's what really shows. So like during an interview, like just answering the algorithm question is one thing, but then pointing out why it's a certain way or, well, if this was a little bit different on the architecture, it'll be this way, it really shows something, right? People are like, wow, this person actually knows what's going on, right? What is, what's behind this? It's not just something I memorized, but something that as a tutor, I had to explain to other people. So I had to actually know what was going on. I couldn't just be like, well, that's just how it is. Right, so that's really something that helps you differentiate you when you're looking for a job or a career. Um, and a lot of people, when they're interviewing you, that will be what shines when you've, when you've been a tutor. Even if you tutor one quarter, the ability to explain it is to someone else in a technical sense is really something that will differentiate you. Thank you so much. Uh, question four, what is the best memory you have pertaining to tutoring? first with then Gary I hope you don't mind me sharing this story you remember a lot of things I don't know if you'll remember this um, so <laughs> it was for a, the grading parties are <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if you still do this but um, it is live stream yes oh <laughs> uh oh well I have to tell it now well, yeah, you but, have to. Um, I, as I you know like our grading too. parties are epic and I think it was in one of my last uh, quarters as a tutor you had invited us over to your house to um, grade CSE 12 exams. 
and um, we had a great time. I think you catered from Punjabi Tandoor, as you always do, um, grading <laughs> late into the night. And I remember going to the bathroom, and I see your toilet. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? There had been like this legend of Gary's toilet <laughs> that I heard throughout the years. I swear, if you push enough buttons, you could have made a hot coffee or something. It was just... <laughs> It was just this contraption, and all I wanted to do was number one. <laughs> well, one thing. And so that is one of my most memorable experiences <laughs> as a teacher. <teacher-teacher. laughs> well, nothing is too good for my tutors, <laughs> so. So that's not your bathroom, that's just the tutor bathroom? <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, next question. yeah, next question, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we used to have a lot of exam grading in my house. I'd invite all the tutors over, and we'd do all the grading, and um, we'd make food. One of the tutors would share food from their culture, and, or we'd you know, make salsa, we'd make guacamole, and this is when we had like 20 tutors, and they could all fit in my house, and then we had so many, they couldn't all fit. Oh. But one quarter, we had a small amount, and so if people came over again and we kind of tried to, you know, ha we, we did have one. And I remember we were there from like 10 in the morning until 5 a.m. the next morning. It was really a long night. So yeah. <laughs> such dedication, definitely. One more question. So next one. Um, how has tutoring helped you to get to where you are now? I think all around. Um, I don't think I'd be anywhere close to, you know, where I am in life right now without tutoring. Um, you know, one from the exposure to like helping students and kind of being more academically involved and like, perf you know, get it, like building those skills. Um, I'll never forget the day that I actually met my, my current manager. Um, I think it was tutoring, uh, it was a grading party at Roundtable for you, Garo, and, and we did joint things with Rick and uh, Danny Reeves, one of uh, Gary's former head tutors, um, you know, came in. I think he was doing a little pre-gaming before a tech talk or something <laughs> like that. Um, and you know, Rick grabs me. He's, oh, you want to stay in San Diego? I'm like, you gotta, you gotta meet Danny. Um, so we, you know, chatted and had a beer, and you know, he, you know, liked me enough, I guess, to uh, to put me through through interviews, and eventually I got placed on his team, uh, and that that was kind of the story about how I got my first job. So, yeah. It's kind of everything for me. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. So um, now we get to do something for for all the audience to participate in. We have a raffle. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for the panel. Thank you. We have some gifts for the panel, CSE blankets. Very special. <laughs> Becky's the greatest. Thank you so much, Becky. So now we have something that we all can participate in, the, um, the raffle. So I have all the raffle tickets here in front of me. They all have a number on them. And then all of your name badges, they have a number as well. So you have to do the translation of that binary number to decimal, right? You're all CS students. So, uh, or in hex, if, it's, if, you, if that's a little easier for you, we have hexadecimal or binary. So you get to figure out what your number is, and then we've got a six gifts. Okay, let's see. Here's the the first one. This and one. The first one is for. The first one is JFS. for. JSOE CSE yeah. swag bag yeah. donated by the Jacobs School of Engineering and the CSE department. Okay, so the lucky first one, and lucky winner, is number eighteen. Decimal eighteen. Decimal eighteen. Decimal 18. Decimal 18. <laughs> I have it right up here. There's another one. How about this? Oh, yeah. No, I'm at this list. Okay. There we go. Oh, got it. Okay. So that was David 2. Is that right? 
All right, congratulations, David. So prize number two, a $25 lift gift certificate donated by the UCSD lift program goes to decimal number 114. 114. 114. Where's decimal 114? Must be present to win. Yeah, he must be present. Or you mu and you must understand the translation to win. <laughs> Even though we Okay, we'll try again. Okay. Uh, number 139. 139. <laughs> David Amadio, congratulations. Another lift. Another lift, $25 lift certificate. So let's see what's going on here. Number 148, decimal number 148, and I don't think, is he here? David? I don't think, so he's not, he I party. hear he's having his bachelor party tonight oh. and that's why he's not and here. he picked that over so this? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, that's All what right. I, uh, number 192, 192. Michelle Bui, thank, congratulations, Michelle. The next one is a $75 gift card donated by the CSE department to number 111, 111. 111 is Aaron Graham. Yes, yeah, you earned that. Uh, the next one is number 29, Another $75, $75 gift, gift, card. gift certificate, gift, yeah, Visa gift card. Number 29. 29? Isn't that 29? Uh-huh. 29. 29. That's my birthday number. Torin. Torin, and he's gone. Well, uh, yeah, you have to be here. Yeah. He's, 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 yeah. He's, he's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, helping he's with helping the wall. With the wall. So yes. we'll pick again. The next one is decimal number 80. Number 80 is Nate Brown. Yeah. Nate is one of my Mike tutors. All right, this quarter, the last current one. tutor. The last Nate. one. Uh, Susan, would you like to pull the card? The yeah, you should pull the, you should pull the ticket. Two orchestra section tickets to Broadway San Diego School of Rock on June 17th. $190 value donated by Susan Marks. Yay. Decimal number 44. 44, you need to recognize, decimal 44, you need to recognize your number. We know who you are. We don't know. Nope. So we'll try again with number 93. 93. 93. Alok Sukwani. Thank you. Congratulations to all the winners. Okay, our, our next, I guess we're five minutes ahead of schedule. Yay. More time to, for photo booths and more refreshments outside and desserts and all kinds of things. But we're still staying here. We still got a little bit more to go. So we have another speaker. Please give a round of applause to Rick Hord. Hello, everyone. So just like when I teach Java, I talk about just-in-time, the compiler. Well, I did a just-in-time speech right here. So I'm, my job is to thank everyone and then get everyone up to uh, uh, get a group photo with a shirt on. So if you want to start putting your shirt on while I'm thanking other people, now would be a good time to do that. Okay, so first and foremost, I would like to thank Becky and Kayla. Where's Be I know Gary's already talking, but Becky and Kayla, stand up, they're right over there. This literally would not have happened without Becky and Kayla. 
they made it happen. <laughs> Becky and Kayla. Also, where's Barbara? Where's Barbara He? Where's Barbara? Stand up, Barbara. Barbara. Barbara designed this design here for our shirt. So everybody, give it up to Barbara. <laughs> Didn't she do a great job? So Custom Ink couldn't do exactly the same design that Barbara did, but we'd like to thank Microsoft. Notice the little Microsoft symbol in there in here. Microsoft actually paid for these suckers. So let's give it up to Microsoft. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, Thank you, Microsoft, and Ellen, if you ever see me, Ellen uh, is uh, our, our Microsoft uh, recruiter and our rep, that uh, university relations rep, and she's the one that graciously used her credit card, her corporate credit card, to pay for that. Okay. Um, I'd also like to thank Alex Matthews, who's taking all the pictures. Alex, come on up here, Alex. Come on here. No, get up here. Come on, come on, Alex. So Alex, Alex is always the one that's behind the photos, but come up here, come up here. <laughs> Alex is a great guy. And, um, and Alex, I think we have, we only have a double XL. Hopefully that'll, double XL. We got a double XL uh, shirt for you out there too. Okay, um, I'd like to thank, uh, you know, the chancellor and uh, uh, Dean Tolson, the chair. I'd also like to thank Al Paisano, he wasn't here, so he had the shortest speech, which is great, but any of you, whenever you're around Al Paisano, the, uh, the dean of the School of Engineering, always ask him about his tie because he has about 30 Jerry Garcia ties. He's not a deadhead, but he loves Jerry Garcia ties, so you have a talking point with the dean of the School of Engineering anytime you have. Um, I'd also like to thank the bartenders because... They gave me three drinks and then they made me get a, <laughs> a wristband to show that I was actually then. So don't forget to tip the bartenders because they actually do take tips. I was a bartender for about two years in the 70s and rock and roll bars. And I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't a bartender, you know, back in the day. So, okay. uh, and I also like all the people who came, all the CSE tutor alums and the current tutors, because without you, we wouldn't have a reunion. So let's give an applause to everybody who was there. I'd also like to thank Cap. Cody was here with Cap, and he said that he forgot. So hopefully Ann O'Donnell is seeing this at some point. She already left. But he said to be sure to thank Ann O'Donnell because if it wasn't for Ann and Cody, where they lived on the second floor of the CSE building before they were forced to move over to EBU-1, they wouldn't know what CSE was like. They wouldn't know what the tutor program was like. They wouldn't know Gary and me and Susan and all the other people. And we probably wouldn't be as well funded every time they go out and get money for the CAP memberships and for uh, companies. They always put a plug in for the CSE tutor program. They put in a plug for WIC and uh, Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing and all these other student orgs. And literally, when Cody was talking about spending all night long, in the early days, he and uh, Paula would spend the nights on these early Yahoo uh, 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 hackathons that were all night long. I know Yahoo isn't around anymore right now. They're old. That's owned by Verizon. But uh, we still have a lot to thank for them, too. So thank you, Ann O'Donnell. Let's give a big <laughs> to Ann O'Donnell, because even though she's not here, she had a big influence on what we do today. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, thank all the presenters that we had here today and all the panelists. That was great. Of course, I can never uh, say enough about uh, my good friend Tanner. Tanner does everything for us. He has helped support the tutor program, seeded a lot of things, helped with grading parties. He comes and grades. You know, my tutors won't let me grade anymore, but he says, get out of the way, and he wants to grade. So thank you very much, Tanner. Tanner's. We wouldn't be here doing that without Tanair, okay? Um, huh? In a minute, in a minute, I got, I got, I got a little bit more. I'd also like to, I'd, I'd also like to thank Alvin Portillo for giving me the thickest car that he has, so that I could actually do just in time, you know, uh, uh, presentation and things. And um, 
And I also really want to, uh, you know, last but not least, you know, uh, thank uh, uh, Gary, because uh, now that I know him as tutor in chief, that is going to be a legacy from now on. So thank you, Gary. <laughs> Gary, tutor in chief, tutor in chief. Now, some of you, some of you may have heard that I am going to probably retire at the end of the next academic year, and that's per retired in chief. Yes, yeah. So I'm going to retire into sleeping in and getting healthy again. Um, but one of the other things that is going to be really missed, everybody's saying, oh, we're going to miss you, miss you. Roundtable is closing at the end of, uh, of this quarter. Yeah, I know. Roundtable is getting kicked off campus. It's not me. So don't give money to the university. <laughs> Hopefully the chancellor's not reading this. Give money back to the CSE tutor program because next year is my last year to spend all of your money on tutors. <laughs> They tell me I can hire 15, and I go, did you say 50? 15, 50, okay, so 500. I wanna hire 500 tutors <laughs> next year. So this is your chance. If you want to give something back to help with me, this is your chance to do that, okay? And uh, now it's time. Becky is saying we need to get back on focus. So everyone, come on up, get your shirt on, and we're gonna have a big group photo up here. Tall people in the back, short people in the front. We need to do layers so some people can sit on the floor, some people can kneel. We need to do, but we want to also be able to see the the, the background there. Alex, you tell Alex, you tell us what we need to do. So everybody, let's quickly go down because uh, the bar is going to close at eight o'clock and the photo booth, all those things. So we want to get moving. While you're all processing, I do want to say thank. I do want to say thank you again to, come on down. As you're coming down, I just want to thank, as you're coming down, I want to say thank you to, to, to Gary and to Rick, to Susan Marks, to Paul Chow. They were all on our committee, and they made this all happen. So thank you. They were great to work with. So thank you. <laughs>